The iconic red rocks of Sedona is a very special place for us. It was actually our first trip together. We came here in January 2017, and that trip ended up being the first of many to come. In fact, Sedona is a place we visit every year in the winter, and we always seem to find new trails and places to explore in the area. Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Ernest from Trip Astute. In this video, we're doing a destination review of Sedona, Arizona, one of our favorite places to visit and explore. A lot of you know that we're huge fans of the national parks and exploring the outdoors. Fiona and I have busy day jobs, which means that we spend a lot of time in offices and glued to our laptop screens. One of the best things about getting away on these weekend trips is that we're forced to fully disconnect from those screens and focus our attention on our present surroundings. While Sedona isn't technically a national park, it definitely feels like one and the area offers many interesting hikes and unique travel experiences. Sedona is in Arizona about two hours north of Phoenix and less than an hour south of Flagstaff. It's also a couple hours south of the Grand Canyon, which makes it an easy stop on a larger road trip. It's honestly a great place for a weekend getaway or as part of a larger trip to the Grand Canyon. We've been to Sedona three times. The first time was in January 2017, before we even launched the channel. The second time was in January 2018, and our most recent trip was this past New Year's. You're probably wondering what keeps us coming back to Sedona, so that's what we'll be exploring in this video. Before we jump in, if you're new here, welcome to our channel. Trip Pursuit is a travel channel that is focused on sharing ways to make travel easier, affordable, and more enjoyable. Traveling can be stressful and expensive, so we're looking for ways to help you maximize your experience through travel tips, points of miles, and innovative gear. If that sounds interesting to you, please consider subscribing. Sedona is known to be an energy vortex. People believe that these vortices have swirling energy or magnetic fields. Many believe that these vortices provide healing energy and mystic powers. I can't say that I felt any of the energy, but there are trees in specific spots that grow in a spiral, which is often cited as proof of the vortex. It's one of those signs for those looking to harness the healing energy in the area. You'll often hear Sedona associated with red rocks. The ground has a deep red color due to the hematite or iron oxide. This is essentially rust, which is caused by the high iron content in the area. Again, the high iron content might be connected to magnetism and mystique in the area. Though even if you're someone who doesn't feel it, like me, it makes a beautiful and dramatic landscape. In this video, I want to review some of our favorite things to do when visiting the area, as well as some tips in case you're planning a visit to Sedona. I'll also include the difficulty rating for each hike so you can gauge whether it's something you want to do. There are tons of trails and places to explore, so I'll only focus on three of our favorite ones. These are the ones that I consider to be must-see attractions and landmarks in Sedona. Also, I'll include a fourth activity for those of you that might want something other than hiking. Number one, Cathedral Rock. This is by far my favorite hike in Sedona. It's a 1.5 mile round trip hike up from the trailhead. The trail itself is well marked, but can be somewhat strenuous, especially for newer or less agile hikers. There's a section in the middle where you have to scramble up rocks. We've definitely seen some people struggle through this section, especially since the traffic is going both up and down the trail through this section. Once you get to the top, you'll see some extremely beautiful views of Sedona. It's an amazing reward after the short but strenuous hike. Cathedral Rock is also one of the most popular vortex spots where you'll see juniper trees growing in a spiral. I recommend doing this hike either early in the morning or at sunset. The parking situation at the trailhead is crowded, so you're better off doing it before or after the main crowds. Another option is to use ride sharing services like Uber and Lyft so you don't have to worry about finding a parking space. Number two, Devil's Bridge. This is a popular hike in Sedona. It's the largest natural sandstone arch in the area. The hiking distance varies depending on where you start it. The closest trail is 1.8 miles round trip, though the trailhead gets crowded and parking is scarce. When we did the hike, we took the longer route, which was about 4.2 miles round trip. The hike does have a 400 foot increase in elevation to get to Devil's Bridge, so I would rate it as medium difficulty. You'll hike through the Coconino National Forest to get to the arch. Once at Devil's Bridge, you'll get some beautiful views of the surrounding red rocks. Number three, Bell Rock. This is another iconic hike in Sedona and an area considered to be full of energy vortices. Bell Rock is a great place to explore, mostly because it offers trails for all levels. You can hike the flat trails around Bell Rock and the nearby courthouse Butte, or you can even scale Bell Rock itself. 
This makes it a great landmark to explore with a family. You'll even spot the twisted trees in the area caused by the energy vortex. However, the only thing I would be careful of is climbing to the peak of Bell Rock, which is 4,919 feet. While it is possible, I've heard that getting down can be treacherous, so I don't recommend doing it. Lastly, if hiking isn't your thing, there are other things you can do. You can take guided Jeep tours of the major landmarks. Also, Sedona is an incredible place to stargaze. For those of us from major urban cities, it's truly spectacular. First time I went to Sedona, I was staring at the night sky from my hotel and I saw a moving object. At first, I thought it was a UFO, though it turned out to be a satellite passing overhead. Being from Los Angeles where there's so much light pollution, it was amazing to see so many stars and other objects in the sky. About two years ago, we signed up for a stargazing tour. It was a great way to learn more from a professional and view the stars from a telescope. The cost of the tour was $60 per person and it was about two hours long. Again, you don't need to take a full tour to gaze at stars, but if you're nerdy like me, then it's worth getting the guided session and access to the telescope. For lodging, it really depends on your budget and travel style. If you're looking to use your points, all the major hotel chains have hotels in the area. For example, there's a Category 4 Hyatt Residence Club, Aishi has a Holiday Inn Express, Marriott has a Courtyard Hotel, and Hilton has a Hampton Inn and Hilton Resort in the area. Most of these places have solid reviews too, so you have options if you want to use your points. For us, we really love a small boutique bed and breakfast in Sedona called the Inn Above Oak Creek. We've stayed there on each of our visits and love the cozy feel of the rooms, which include a fireplace and jacuzzi bathtub. Keep in mind that while it may not be the most lucrative redemption option, you can use the Chase Travel Portal to book most independent hotels and inns at a flat rate points redemption. Oddly enough, the Inn Above Oak Creek doesn't seem to be available on the travel portal, so check out their website if you want more information about the Inn. For getting around, you'll need to rent a car. While some might prefer an SUV, you really shouldn't need one. Most of the roads are paved and accessible and shouldn't require an SUV. The only catch is in the winter. If you think you might be experiencing icy or snowy weather, it might be worth getting a vehicle with all-wheel drive. Though to be honest, it's uncommon for Sedona to get a lot of snow. We happened to be there for a major snowstorm on New Year's Eve last year, but that's not the norm. For dining, there are plenty of options in the area. However, most restaurants close by 9 p.m., so just be aware in case you're used to eating late. We made the mistake of trying to find a restaurant after 8 p.m. on our last trip, and were told by multiple restaurants that they couldn't seat us and that they would be closing the kitchen soon. We ended up getting dinner at Chipotle, which wasn't ideal, but it saved the day. If you're going to be in the area, I highly suggest making reservations in advance or plan to get an early meal. For example, one restaurant that seems to be extremely popular is the Elote Cafe. We've not had a chance to eat there since it's always busy. They don't take reservations either, so it's first come, first serve, starting at 5 p.m. As always, if you're planning a trip to Sedona, here are a few tips to keep in mind. Number one, fly into Phoenix. While Flagstaff is the nearest airport to Sedona, there aren't many flights or airlines that land there. This means that flights to Flagstaff can be pricey. We recommend flying into Phoenix, then driving north to Sedona. It's about a two hour drive, but it's very scenic. Number two, stop at the Hike House. The Hike House, located in central Sedona, is a great place to get additional information about hikes and weather conditions. They also have a great selection of hiking supplies and a coffee shop to grab last minute refreshments before hitting the trails. Number three, get equipped with the right gear. Having a comfortable pack, durable hiking shoes with a lot of grip, and the right clothing materials like merino wool and stretch fabrics always makes hiking a more enjoyable experience. Also, I recommend using insulated reusable water bottles that can keep water cool even in extreme temperatures. If you're planning a trip in the winter, it also doesn't hurt to pack some ice and snow cleats. These are a lifesaver when having to walk through slippery areas or if you happen to get stuck in a snowstorm. Number four, pack hand sanitizer and hand wipes. This is another tip that we often share when traveling, especially to more remote locations. Most of the bathrooms do not have running water, so bringing hand wipes and sanitizer can help you feel clean and comfortable. Number five, use Google Maps to find trailheads and attractions. Some of the trailheads can be tricky to locate. We tried several navigation apps, but found that Google Maps had the most comprehensive and up-to-date information. Also, you can download maps offline before your trip in case you have spotty coverage when in the area. Number six, bring a hat, sunglasses, sunscreen, and lots of water. There isn't much overhead vegetation or shade on a lot of the hikes, so you wanna be extra careful with your sun exposure. Pack plenty of water when hiking on the trails too. The general rule for how much water to consume is one liter or 32 ounces of water for every two hours of hiking. 
Also, if you're wearing sunglasses with brown lenses, you may find it a bit disorienting. Since the soil is red and brown often adds more contrast to your vision, it can make the environment glow red. If you have a pair of gray or more neutral colored lenses, I recommend using them instead. Number seven, consider visiting during the off season. Sedona tends to get very busy in the summer months. However, I think it's a great place to visit during late fall or winter. You'll not only skip the hot weather, but also all the crowded parking lots and trails. Number eight, don't take unnecessary risks. You'll see a lot of people taking selfies along the edges of cliffs. While I'm not opposed to taking pictures, I don't recommend dangling your feet along the edges or letting yourself get distracted. The wind at higher elevations is unpredictable and it's easy to get distracted or startled when on the trails. Devil's Bridge offers some amazing photo opportunities and is a good example of an area where you need to be extra cautious. Number nine, stop by Whole Foods for supplies or a quick meal. While I encourage you to visit the local restaurants and cafes for meals, there are times you just need a quick bite to eat or some supplies for the trails. If that's the case, I highly recommend Whole Foods in the area. Like most other Whole Foods, they have a hot food bar. However, this one also has a bar. It's a great place to get a cheap and quick meal in between hikes or activities. Number 10, leave no trace. You wanna make sure that you protect yourself and the trails when exploring. This means not damaging or altering the environment, following safety precautions, avoid feeding any wildlife, and always disposing of any trash or waste. Also, a big pet peeve of mine is seeing people hiking while playing loud music. It's not only inconsiderate to other hikers, but the sound can often echo through the area, affecting wildlife. Don't be that person. We obviously went through the hikes very quickly, so if you're planning to do any of these hikes, make sure you take the time to research each trail. As I mentioned earlier, the hike house is a great place to start, and we've always had fantastic service and suggestions when looking for new hikes to try in the area. I'll include some links in the video description and on our website. Have you been to Sedona? If so, what's your favorite hike or activity? Let us know in the comment section below. Also, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please give us a thumbs up and consider sharing our video with others. It really helps us growing our channel and our community. Until next time, travel safe and travel smart.